Hello and welcome friends, my name is Frenzy here and today we're playing a brand new game and starting a brand new series, which is Darkest Dungeon. I'll do my best to explain it without referencing other games, which is very easy to do sometimes, but I think that's it's, it's not a good way to explain things, right? Because you may not have played that game. So this game is it's very RNG heavy, right? So there's randomly generated events and things that are happening. Um, you know, it's kind of gives you a Dungeon and Dragons feeling, you know, sometimes it's it's a little bit of a luck of the die, you know, rolling some dice and getting some good luck or or not getting some good luck frequently as, as it seems to happen so often in these types of games. Uh, but it's kind of a roguelike, you know, it's it's very, it's a very interesting, has a beautiful art style, great sound, amazing narration. Now, I haven't played this game a ton but it's always kind of a game that I've enjoyed jumping in for a little bit. But I thought, why not do a long-term series with this? So this will be kind of a uh, lightly edited, you know, we'll edit out, edit out load times. And maybe just if I'm just kind of aimlessly doing nothing for a long time. Which is not frequent in this game because there's a lot to do. There's not a lot of downtime. And I think that's what makes it so good. So this will probably be kind of a long series where we're going through the darkest dungeon. But we're going to go ahead and start a new, brand new campaign. Um, there's different modes that you can just kind of choose from, pick and choose from. You have, you know, Radiant, which is kind of like the easiest, and then we have this kind of middle mode, um, which is, you know, just kind of standard. You know, it will be long, um, more challenging. Radiant's a little bit shorter. Then we have this kind of uber hard mode, which is kind of focused on no forgiveness and conquering evil within time and a hero death limit, which is just at this point way beyond me. So um, we're going to go ahead and give Darkest. I I've never actually beat this game quote-unquote beat uh so and i haven't even gotten that far i would say so we're definitely gonna hit darkest i think that sounds like the most fun um i guess we're just naming it darkest because I, I apparently clicked through but we have a cinematic here so i will shut up and let you guys listen you will arrive along the old road it winds with a troubling, serpent-like suggestion through the corrupted countryside. Leading only, I fear, to ever more tenebrous places. There is a sickness in the ancient, pitted cobbles of the old road. And on its writhing path, you will face viciousness, violence, and perhaps other damnably transcendent terrors. So steal yourself, and remember there can be no bravery without madness. The old road will take you to hell, but in that gaping abyss, we will find our redemption. Wow, <laughs> I just love the narration in this game. Uh, it's just, it's so well written, so well done. It's just you're the serpent-like suggestion of the road. Like, that's such a good line. Um, so that's it, and uh, we're gonna jump right in. You can see, um, I, you know, and I'll try to introduce you to some of the the game. This isn't really a guide or tutorial, but it by any means. But you know, I feel like I'm not doing my duty as a YouTuber if I don't kind of let you know what's happening and what's up with the game mechanics, things like that. So we start off with just two characters here. We can move with the W A keys, um, back and forth here. So it's kind of like a, a 2D. I guess it really is a 2D game, but it doesn't feel like it. I guess because the art is just so detailed and. It's very beautiful and just kind of um, just awesome in general, is speaking. Um, you can see we have our, our two characters here. We have uh, Renald and Dismas, as I will say. It's it poorly pronounced, but I'm going to go with it. Sounds good to me. And so you can see, you know, we have their name down here. Um, we also have their class. So there's different types of character classes that you can kind of choose and uh, play along with. And they all have their different roles. Um, in this case, we have our Crusader, who's kind of like our tanky character he is up front then we have Ismas who I would man kind of like a rogue character does some good damage has some range with this pistol as well which is kind of cool you can see we can also um, swap character places which does play a factor certain attacks can only be used from certain spots and you'll see this frequently if you can see this it's pretty small but um, for example on my my smite ability um, it can only hit those two red dots in the front. That means it'll only be able to hit more battling people over here. They'll only be able to hit the first two people. Um, and in order to use it, you can see those two kind of like uh, cream colored uh, off white 
um, under to the left there, that's that's the position I have to be in to use it. So I am in those first two spots. We only have two people, so I am in the first two spots. So that can be a factor. Um, you know, for example, the pistol shot. I could not use it if I moved Ismas to the front. So this is kind of like part of the game, and you know, your characters sometimes they get moved around and things happen and you get out of place and so this is kind of how things go and you can see we have a map a very small map here um, these get bigger as we actually go into actual dungeons so we're going to go ahead and move to this room which you select and then we can move along here um, you take insanity you see or stress i should say um, so I just got three stress. Sometimes it's just random. Sometimes, you know, if you walk backwards, you're more likely to incur stress. And there's, you know, when you're in battle, obviously, it's pretty stressful. And this can play... Stress can kill you, legitimately. And it can and do a whole bunch of other things that are tricky to deal with, we'll say. But we're going to go ahead and actually get some combat in here. So, again, turn-based. Um, I guess there's kind of like a speed stat or something. Some of these that relative effect where if he's, must, he's a rogue, obviously, he's first so we could grape shot blast which you can see at the bottom there um the bottom right the red one there's three little linking red dots as opposed to three individual means ones meaning if there was two other guys behind him we could actually hit him another guy and somebody else that's not really useful and you can see it has uh, accuracy base um, damage mod because it is an aoe it takes minus 60 percent it's also minus seven percent on so these are things to consider um, but we have here Open Vein, which we're going to go ahead and use. Pretty good accuracy. A little bit lower damage, but not too bad. Not compared to Grape Shot. Um, it also has a Wonder Base for Bleed. So we can actually make him bleed for two points for three rounds if it successfully um, works. And we can also debuff a target. Minus 20 plus Bleed Resist. So it doesn't work the first time, and we get we get that debuff. Hey, Parable, let's go ahead and shut up and kill this guy. Which we uh, do a pretty good job there. So he's debuffed. And he's bleeding two points of damage per round. And he gets his attack. He did um, some good damage. We resisted his effect, whatever it may have been. Uh, and uh, so we're going to go ahead. And we have some different options. We have Bulwark of Faith. And I can put this on myself. Off myself. I believe it also makes me a target. So I'm kind of like ink. Stunning Blow, there's a chance to stun this guy, doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Um, so that's, you know, stunning is pretty darn useful. We have a Zealous Accusation, where we eventually hit a couple of guys, does a little bit less damage. Not the best, but it can be useful in certain situations. Here's our big one, Smite, an 85 accuracy, plus 15% versus damage versus unholy. This guy is human, he is not unholy, but it's still... Um, there's no negative damage. You can see um, some of these have, you know, minus damage mods. So this is just standard. So it'll do some good damage. Let's kill this guy. Done. Our first battle, and you can see loot is a big factor here. So we get 100 gold. Very nice. Or is it merely a trick of the light? We, we walk up here, and um, we can kind of go through these... Rates here, you hit to hit W to do that. We've been ambushed as we walked through. So we got a big guy to deal with. You can kind of see all their stats, which is pretty interesting. He's at 35 HP. Um, his speed is pretty bad. He only has one versus you know, like seven. That's why I get to go first. Um, he's got resistance to decent resistance to stun, light, buff, and move. We can talk about. As they kind of come up here, so we, we can grape shot and uh, can we hit? We can hit both. Good. Um, so we could do that. We do a pistol shot, which does a little bit more damage, um, and then we could try to take this guy out. I don't know. I, I think we want to take this guy out, and then we can just focus on the big. Almost dead. Um, and then I get to go. So if we do zealous accusation, oh no, see zealous accusation. I, I think it's because this guy's so big. I think he counts as like two two spots and so that's why we can't reach this guy so we could mark myself kind of make myself the buff guy he's got 50 percent you know stun damage resistance so i think we're just gonna go for a big swipe on him 10 damage not bad see what he can do punishment ow he critted me and he caused me a lot of stress by when he critted me and i'm bleeding oh man that's not ideal oh dodge good dodge good dodge all right Oh no, he gets to go again? Oh, he must have decent speed. He must have caught up. We have a debuff minus two dodge now. 
Uh, so he, he's got 4 HP. So I might try to do this. Hopefully we'll get this back guy. Oh! One damage away. Wow, that may have hurt me. Wow, he just did a lot of damage. And he pushed me back again. That's something that is not ideal. That can cause a lot of problems. Um, but I think for now we should be okay. So, Oh, and I missed! And we are having a rough start here. Um, I can't do anything because I'm in the back position. I need to move this guy. Otherwise, we're not even going to be able to kill this guy. So he's just shooting us. Got a dodge, 1 HP. That's not too bad. Debuffed. Oh, man, I got the double debuff. It stacks. Rough. Um, so we're going to go ahead and again take another swing at this guy. Do some good damage against him. Ooh, good dodge, good dodge. Very nice, very nice. Um, let's, uh, you know, we should be able to do our, use our grape shot here. There we go. A little bit of damage to the front guy. We finally took out that guy in the back. Whipped us. He whipped us good. Ooh, man. Bleed, that bleed, I'm, I need to get... Other than later. Alright, so one HP away. Oh, man. Uh, so let's do open vein. This does some good solid damage. Rated just for added effect. Because why not? You can see we have some things that are worth some gold. We have some sapphire. We have some deeds, which is fantastic. We're going to go ahead and uh, return to Hamlet so I don't bleed out. <laughs> wow, that, that was a pretty rough intro there. Victory! So we have a 5,000 gold quest reward. Gold is useful for um, many things. Upgrading buildings, healing your characters, all these wonderful things. We have uh, food. And that's during your, your journey. At various points. Boom. So we also got deeds. Heirlooms, which I'll talk about a little bit later. What are the purpose of those? We'll find out. And here's the tough part. Um, you have a chance, depending on what happens, and just kind of overall, I think, RNG, um, to get either positive or negative status effects. See, um, we have a, a negative and a positive. These can be dealt with, and again, something I'll, I'll deal with in the future. Um, but know that for the moment. Um, so against beasts, we have plus 20% stress. Against unholy, we have plus 10% accuracy and plus 3% crit. Pretty actually nice. We gained um, some resolve XP. Well, let's return to town. Welcome home, such as it is. This squalid hamlet, these corrupted lands, they are yours now, and you are bound to them. Indeed, we are bound to them. So, um, so we've actually leveled up. We've gone from level zero, I believe it is. I believe our activity log. So we're both level one. Um, Later, definitely escorted you to the hamlets. Excellent. We have some quest goals here. We have a lot of quest goals. Uh, I believe this is like our our big goal here. So things that you can do. I don't think you have to do. I think the quest goals you have to do. The um, roster goals. I'm not sure. You, but that would well useful to find out here. So exit out of this, and you can see we have plenty of options. Uh, so a good chunk of this this first episode will probably just be getting going through. Playing some things, but hopefully we can actually go ahead and a legitimate dungeon so you guys can see that. The stagecoach. The stagecoach is incredibly important. This is where we're gonna recruit new heroes. And men, soldiers and outlaws, fools and corpses. All, right. I... All will find their way to us now that the road is clear. Okay. I was trying to let the narrator talk because he's kind of a badass. So uh, uh you can see we have uh, some important things going on here. Um, we have Renald and Dismas, and so health isn't too much of a concern. It recovers basically the ideas. I think you rest up, or to you know, Dungeon Dragons, you have a, a long rest and you're okay health wise. However, you do get the stress, which carries over. Stress, man, stress is rough. It's something you really have to work on and manage. Uh, we're not too bad. Renald got a little bit, which kind of sucks, but in kind of work from it there and. Uh, uh, get some new heroes. This is incredibly important. Upgrade the stagecoach increases the available heroes for higher each week or increase the roster size. Very important in both cases. Um, and this is where the heirlooms I was talking about that we collected. We collected a couple deeds. This is incredibly important. This is how we we get better and improve and kind of you know build up over time, so to speak. And so 
Um, we, we definitely want to do some upgrading of the stagecoach. It's probably early on the most important thing you can do. So each, each kind of upgrade requires certain things. In this case, this requires, uh, press and E. So it's good that we got a couple. So we can increase the number of recruits available for hire. Uh, the change will take effect after you return from your quest. That's pretty good. This is probably the most important, in my opinion, um, which is increases the size of the hero roster. Right now we can hold nine people and upgrade it. And we can hold 12. So that's really important. Uh, part of part of what I like to do in this game, and everyone I think has their own different play styles, is I like to build a really, really deep roster of heroes. That way, you know, if one of them's really stressed out or, you know, he just can't go out to battle because he's got some kind of horrible disease or something like that, uh, you can just keep rotating and have good players come in. So it does take longer to do that, I feel. You know, if you were to just focus on and work on just like kind of a set of like, five or six maybe seven heroes that would be really good um, and get you places but if one of them dies you know you're or two of them dies or you get wiped you might be screwed and so um having that nice deep roster i think is really important i think we will do definitely in this series i'm also gonna i think i'm just gonna increase it again because it's i really feel like it's that important um we're gonna get the the plague doctor before you recruit um now we're gonna take these guys no matter what Simply uh, for the fact that we need guys. Um, we, we only have two. We need, really need a party of four. So we're going to take them no matter what. But upon recruiting, you can check out their information. Um, and oftentimes they have different things going on. Um, like they might have different quirks. He was uh, possessed by demon. Right? That's kind of weird. Plus 20% stress in the warrens, which is a dun type of dungeon we can go to. Or... They might have good good quirks, things that are good. Um, plus 10% blight resistance, right? That's nice to have. And then they also sometimes start with different abilities, and they can have different camping skills. Again, we'll, we'll get into that later. Not really relevant at this very second, but, you know, it's, it's something when you start to have more heroes and more things at your disposal, you can really kind of be picky and choose things that you like. You'll find there's certain abilities you like. There's some ones you don't, so that may factor in. But for now, we're, we're going to be taking both of these guys, guaranteed. Um, we, we really need them. Um, we can have... See, we have a Vestal. Uh, this guy's kind of like a debuffer, a stunner. He's kind of an all-around character. Pretty useful. Our, our Vestal, or our healer, basically. Healer can do some stuns. Um, can heal. Has options for, like, party heals, which is unfortunately locked. Uh, but, you know, things that can be purchased later on if we need to. So we have party heals, then we have an actual heal again. Healing incredibly important. Uh, there really is no great way to heal with items, and so having a Vestal or somebody that can do some sort of healing, very crucial. So we're definitely going to want a lot of Vestals because they, they really keep you surviving long term. Um, and so we're definitely taking, taking these characters. Yeah, so we got four characters. We've upgraded. We've used a lot of our stuff for upgrades. Go check out some of these other buildings. In time, you will know the tragic extent of my failings. So this is, uh, you know, where you can go back and check the Maddox, I believe. A lot of cool stuff. There, we got the graveyard. Most will end up here, covered in the poisoned earth. Awaiting merciful oblivion. At the graveyard. To kill like, dead heroes. Fortunately, none yet. Although we came close with Renault. And so do the length of the episode. I'm going to break this into two parts. So if you enjoyed, hit that like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. But as always, guys, I will see you next time.